Okay, hello. Today I'm going to show you how to uh, prep your project for stain and just a general introduction on sanding. So I have this interlocking project here that has, um, it's got some pencil marks still on it and um, it also has a, uh, a veneer crack that we tried to uh, put a little bit of uh, CY glue or, or crazy glue on it to stop it from spreading. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a white eraser and just start erasing my pencil marks. It will be a little bit easier to remove than sanding. So you'll still have to give everything a, a you know, sanding, but it's just less work. You can try to just erase them. So I'll just do that. Okay, just double check. All right, got one more set over here. All right, great. So for my sanding, um, the plywood comes from the factory pretty smooth. Okay, it definitely has a little bit of a raised texture to it. And I do like to give it a, a quick sanding um, before we apply our first finish, and then after the first clear coat is when we do the second sanding okay um so i have here a palm sander this is called a quarter sheet palm sander and this is one of the newer ones uh, this one is uh, is brushless so it runs a little quieter so you, i'm just gonna squeeze in right here squeeze in right here that'll re release the spring on this spring clamp and then I can then squeeze this button right here to open these jaws and take this old sandpaper out. So the way this works is there's a motor right here and it spins a wheel and the wheel has a weight on one side and the pad is mounted on these little rubber uh, like mounts and so it can, it can move ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see that, just it, it wiggles just a little bit. So as that wheel spins, it actually spins off balance and um, that causes a slight vibration. So just a little vibration. And that's all you need for the sandpaper to do its cutting action. These holes in here uh, are, are dust collection holes. And it will, as the motor spins, it has an impeller which will draw dust into here. So um, when we have the luxury of working you know, in, in the classroom, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, 220 grit sandpaper for this. So. This is a sheet of 220, okay, uh, P220. And so this is a, uh, an aluminum oxide. There's 220 grains of sands per square inch is in layman's terms, how, how the grit works. Okay, and then here, it's a little deceiving. I have a, they're the same color. They used to be different colors, but this is a, uh, a 100 grit, so it's coarser. So here there's 100 grains of sand per square inch. Okay, and then, uh, so coarse, fine, and then super fine, okay, this is a, uh, a 500 grit, okay, so it's almost two, twice as fine as the 220. We rarely use this except for some unique projects because it just, it doesn't last long and we don't really need to get it this, this smooth in the shop. So since this is a quarter sheet palm sander, I have to uh, prepare this sandpaper to be used. So the sandpaper comes in 9 by 11 sheets, 9 inches across, 11 inches tall. I'm just going to fold it in half and get a good clean seam. Okay. And then don't slide your hand, your finger. You, you tend to, you risk cutting it because it is an abrasive and it gets pretty sharp. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And then, so now I have my quarters. Get a really good crease, the, the, the trick is the crease. And then you should be able to just tear it on that crease. That's good. This one will just tear up nicely. Okay, so I've got four pieces of 220 grit sandpaper. Now I'm going to install them onto the sander. So it's gonna go like this, all right? Because we need extra material to fold up under the edges. So 
um, on this one, they tried to redesign the clamps here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the front first, the front of the sander. So I'm just gonna push down on this jaw here, open it up. It's a little bit stiff. Let me see if I can get it in there a little bit better. So right there. It's hard when the sandpaper has uh, curled a little bit. Okay, so now that's set. Okay, it's clamped down. I'm gonna roll it over. And this is the new design. This is actually a pretty nice design. You just roll this over, and then as you go and clamp it, one clamp, two clamp, it tightens it up, okay? Again, if you can, uh, use one of these pads. These are in the tan cabinet. Line it up on the inside corner here, and then just push down, and that will make the holes so that this will last longer and suck up the dust. Okay, so now I've got these holes in here for my dust collector. So I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna try to sand with the grain whenever possible, not against it. So just so you can see here, this is a little bit blonder than this. This wood has oxidized, so in, in contact with the air. Uh, I'm cutting it down, and you can see the color's getting a little bit crisper, okay? So um, you'll also feel a noticeable difference between where you sand it and where you haven't, but very quickly, okay? And you can see this is already, it doesn't have a long life because it's so fine. So this, this pad actually needs to be changed now. That's as long as I was able to get. Um, it maybe has another like 30 seconds of use left, but I need a fresh sheet to work down the residue of the glue here. So I'll throw this one out and I'll put on a new one. So we'll open the jaw up again. get that lined up close these down lock it make sure you're working on a good piece of cardboard if you don't work on cardboard every time you flip your project over it's gonna get scratched from the workbenches like all this stuff on the workbenches will uh, will scratch your your beautiful plywood so I'm gonna push this in put the uh, those collection holes in here, and now I'm gonna just focus on that. Don't push too hard.
I think that's pretty good. And do a little bit more right there. So, if you saw, we kept on rotating. I was working on the edges of the uh, the duster, I mean of the sander, a little bit, just to, to get some fresh sandpaper. I didn't want to overly sand the outside edges too much. I want to focus on the high spot of the glue that was left on the seam here. So now what I'm gonna do is just do the edges quickly, very lightly, because I'm still gonna sand this again after my first coat of uh, polycrylic. <laughs> Let's see what happens if I take a little bit of 500, just ease in that joint line, those interlocking joints, they're a little bit sharp. So I'm going to have to go against the grain here, so I'm just going to see you know, it's a very thin, uh, it's a 32nd of an inch thick veneer. Oh, that did help. So... It's much nicer. Okay, I'm actually going to tear this. And get a fresh area. I'll probably have to do this again once I put the clear coat on, but I figure I'd rather not have. Um, any additional splintering when I'm going to slide these pieces together. I'm just testing the edges. Okay, that feels good. Let's just see how that comes together again. Just be gentle. You never know if the humidity increased in the shop and uh... all right, that's nice. So that works out well there. 
Still locks in. So I'm gonna dust these off. And then get ready for some stain. Okay, so I'm going to be using an oil-based stain. Um, you want to make sure your work your workspace is nice and clear. And I'll actually work on this side since it's uh, a little less dusty. If you're doing a big project, I would dust off your workspace. I'm raising up my project on two scrap pieces of wood. This is very important so that you don't. Uh, have your, your finish stick to your cardboard. And then we also don't want to stain right on top of the tables or else it's gonna ruin the tables. So I'm just gonna get a, uh, a brush. I'm sure I'm doing this so I could, you guys can see where all the materials are. For this project, um, I'm gonna be using a, uh, a two inch brush and white shop towel. And since I'm using an oil-based stain, which I really don't like to use, too often uh, in the shop here. It's very toxic. It's not good to breathe. Um, it takes it takes uh, at least a day to dry. Um, I really don't like to do big projects with it, so this little one is good. Usually we just use shellac, and I'll make another video on that. So this will stain your clothes. This will stain your skin. It can only be cleaned up with the uh, mineral spirits, which, which is basically um, a uh, like a gasoline, you know, a, it's a, it's a petroleum-based product. So I'm going to use this multi-tool to open up the can, and this is an espresso stain. You could buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's or the hardware store. And um, we're going to stir it a little bit with a piece of scrap wood. Um, so I'm just going to grab a. Uh, piece of solid wood, scrap wood. So I usually leave them right here. I'll make a quick, uh, quick stir right here. Get the splinters off of it. And then just stir up the solids so that the color is going to be uniform. So there are some solids on the bottom. You can see that. You want to just kind of make sure that you've uh, agitated it enough where they're rising up to the top. OK, so I'm going to start on this project. I'm actually going to start on the edges. OK, um, that way I can dry brush the surfaces. If I started on the surface, when I go to do the edges, I'm going to ruin my nice surface that I just uh, worked on. Okay, so I'm just going to put the brush in ever so slightly. And I'm going to start off with the edge on this. And we're just going to see, you don't want to go on too heavy. You may need to wear a smock with a stain. Okay, because even all the little drips and dots and stuff that will stain your clothes. So I'm going to put the end grain sucks it in quite a bit. Okay. And that's my period uh my cleanup bell. Hold on. So I'll just do one of them, all right? And then um, I'll stop the video and I'll do the other one so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But we, you don't wanna have drips, okay? You wanna keep tabs of your drips. You can dry brush them, okay? But you gotta kinda work fast with the stain or else it's gonna, it's gonna set up that way. 
Okay, so I'll continue on here. I'm using just the tip of the brush. Kind of working it in. I've got a big drip right there. I'll just dry brush that out. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm getting the color everywhere. We're only gonna be putting one coat of stain. You could definitely do a couple of touch-ups, but you don't wanna do big touch-ups on the face. Okay, so here, maybe I can make this a little easier. Okay, and then lastly, Your pro most of your projects are going to be assembled when you finish them. So you'll just be flipping your whole project upside down to access the tops and the bottoms. Everybody's going to have their own unique challenges when they apply their finish. Okay, so I'm going to go with the grain. Just taking a look here. I'm trying to get inside of that, that slot. You can see I'm kind of working the brush. And then pull off. So it's going to take about five minutes to absorb into the wood, you know, about five minutes, and then I like to wipe it off. Okay, so I'll do this, I'll rotate this piece so I can continue to work. It's okay to touch it with your gloves. Okay, so that's pretty good. I rest my brush here. I'm going to take my shop towel and I'm going to start. I'm going to go in this direction. The wood is, if I go this way, you could hear it like tearing the fiber. So that way doesn't feel good. This way it feels a lot better. I'm going to wipe my fingers and it may change, you know, the direction. Just take off and that's that's the color we're going for right there get any puddles out of the way okay wipe off any fingerprints give it a little, little, little work here okay and let's see how we're doing here okay I missed some spots there I'll do a little touch up Okay, and then inspect it. Did another little touch up here. And just kind of wipe it off. If you don't wipe it off, it'll 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 kind of dry as a puddle. I'm gonna dry brush this. I could also flip them over. Here's some puddles on this side. You gotta work on those right away. And then finish this. Okay, and then I'll stop the video in a second. Oh, I, I picked the side that has the the seam that I sanded down here. This hopefully that doesn't pop. You do have to work fast with the stain, or else it comes out really blotchy. Okay, when the brush stop, stops working, just dip it in a little bit, and I'll probably be able to finish it with that product on it right now. Okay, 
So that's definitely a little heavy on this side. Um, I'm gonna let it absorb in just a little bit. I guess I'll start cutting the other one and then I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll, I could see I do have some, some drips. Okay, let's give it a quick test here. I think it's ready. This may just be a different veneer, a different face of the veneer, and it took it differently. Sometimes this plywood has one side that's birch and one side that's maple. That looks nice, actually. Okay, you don't want to leave that. Okay, pull that those streak marks, marks off. Okay. And I'm going to roll my towel, get some fresh part of the towel. I could smell this already. Um, it's a very strong odor. Okay, and then just wipe my fingers. I'm gonna l check it for any drips. Okay, I think we're good. A little bit there, we're good. All right. And then this side looks good. Okay, and then I'm gonna go inside the dado here, the slot, just wipe off any heavy finish in there. Anywhere where it's like overly shiny, just wipe it off. All right, cool. All right, guys, so that is it. I'm gonna do the other side, and um, that's how, to, how you sand and apply an oil-based stain on your project. Thanks for watching.